Studies. My name is Jordan and I will be guiding you through this pre-scene for the Management Case Study exam for the November and February 2021 and 2022 exam sitting. Now in this pre-scene we are looking at a business called Frinta who are a manufacturer of central heating systems and electronic devices for homes. Now before we go any further I feel an introduction is in order. My name is Jordan and I work on the content creation team at Astranti. Now part of my role is to prepare materials for the MCS exam. This will include our pre-scene analysis series of videos, the production of our industry analysis of the pre-scene company, and I'm also heavily involved in the writing of the mocks that we produce for the MCS exam. Besides the case study itself, I am also one of the SEMA tutors here at Astranti, where I produce a range of content from the objective test mocks through to the study text and learning videos. Now, how does this video series work? Well, we'll start by going through the pre-scene section by section, breaking it down as we go along. We will only cover a couple of pages in the pre-scene each video so that you can pace yourself through the document. First, we're going to be looking at the key points of the pre-scene analysis. Now, this will include the operations of the pre-scene company, so if it's a manufacturer's manufacturing process, for example, how it serves its customers, who are its customers, and what its financial position and performance is, as well as its organizational structure, to name but a few of these key points that we're going to be looking at. Alongside this, we're going to be looking at providing a wider industry analysis and show you how this relates to our pre-scene company. And for the industry analysis more specifically, we have a separate video that covers the finer points of the wider industry in more detail. Now, it is important that in your exam, you demonstrate your industry knowledge and awareness when answering your questions, as that is what the examiners are also looking for alongside your ability to answer the question. To aid our analysis, we'll also be using some business models that seem relevant. So, for example, we may use PESEL, SWOT, or Porter's Five Forces to give some generic analysis of the business. Now, perhaps the most important part of this video series is to raise the most likely exam issues from the pre-scene document. So this analysis is designed to refine your knowledge of the precinct company and the wider industry, but we also want to connect this information to the relevant topics that you have learned in your SEMA studies and these topics that you will obviously be examined on. And to supplement this, I may give some exam hints or tips that are based on past experience on how SEMA have assessed certain topics in the past. Once we've covered the pre-scene analysis, we'll move on to the strategic analysis. Now in this video, we use something called the rational planning model. Now don't worry if you haven't heard of it before, it is generally something that is introduced at the higher levels of the SEMA qualification. Nevertheless, it is a very useful tool for us to use when conducting a strategic analysis of our pre-scene company. Now, using the strategic analysis, we can attempt to figure out what the current position of the company is, where it plans to go, and how it intends to get there. So the purpose of this in the exam is so that you have a broader understanding of what the precinct company's strategic goals are, which will allow you to frame your answers in a way that makes strategic sense for the company. And lastly, we will round off this video series with a top 10 issues video. Now, this might seem self-explanatory, but it's basically me going through and picking out the top 10 issues that I think are relevant to this precinct company. And we do this because there's a lot of material to cover at this level of the qualification, so we hope this top 10 video will help direct your revision and narrow your focus on the theory that is most important for this precinct company. As for how this analysis specifically works, Again, I'll be going through the pre-scene section by section, but I'll also be assuming there is no prior knowledge of the pre-scene. So we will be building up our knowledge of the pre-scene together, starting from zero, working all the way up to 100. Obviously, if you have already read the pre-scene, then you may need to be patient for the first couple of videos as we build up our knowledge of the pre-scene company. And we recommend that you are active in your learning and that you take notes of the precinct alongside our analysis. So you could read the section of the precinct covered in the video prior to watching it so that you can compare your notes to ours. Now, this will mean that you may have some different points. Maybe you will find issues that are not addressed in the video itself, but that is completely fine. That is the whole point of this process. The point is, is that together, we can try and identify as many points as possible and help substantiate your own analysis of the pre-scene. 
Then once we've finished our precinct analysis, as already mentioned, we will go through the full strategic analysis and the top 10 issues. Just to finish off then with some notes to consider on the precinct itself. For starters, the precinct is released by SEMA to give you context on the precinct company you are going to be examined on. So SEMA's aim is to test the content of the precinct in the exam. This means we can make some educated guesses about what may come up in the exam. Emphasis on the may, there's no guarantee. So the inclusion of particular items within the precinct could indicate that SEMA intends to actually test you on that particular bit of content in the exam. And I'll do my best to point out these to you as we go through the precinct. However, I will say this, and I urge that you take this to heart. Do not pre-write anything based on the precinct alone. This is because in the exam, you will be given a range of scenarios that you will have to respond to specifically. These unseen scenarios will include information that is not in the pre-scene. So if you go into the exam with a pre-written answer based solely on the pre-scene, you are likely to end up writing answers that do not answer the question posed in the exam. And if you do not answer the question, you will not be rewarded for your efforts. Instead, you should use the content that we're providing here to give you a background on the various topics to make it easier for you to adapt and respond to the unseen issues more effectively. So as some final points, do use the pre-scene and make recommendations that are consistent with your analysis, but make sure you answer the question and make sure you address the unseen issues in the question directly and organically. And so with full introductions out of the way, what I'm going to do in this video is go through a number of things. Namely, I'm going to outline now how this video series is going to be split into various parts and just go through this front page in brief before we get into the case study or the pre-scene, I should say, proper. So as I sort of indicated, we're going to go through the introductory pages. We're going to go through Frinter's history and look at its products. Namely, we're going to firstly look at its heating controls, its heating controls product in this first part of the video series. One thing I also want to make note of, make sure you understand, is the COVID-19 statement you see at the bottom here. While you can use elements of the COVID-19 pandemic, as long as they are relevant to your argument and provide valid points that you can bring up, you should overall consider the COVID-19 pandemic as not having had an impact on the pre-scene company. So, for an example, you won't assume that the financial statement, so its financial performance, has been affected by COVID-19 explicitly. If anything, Frinter's financial performance will be affected by other elements, not COVID-19. Overall, it's probably safer to avoid referencing COVID-19 unless you're absolutely certain it can just be a little bit of flavor, a little point that you can make in your answer. But overall, do not make COVID-19 a central part of your argument for the sake of your marks and the safety in the exam. Okay, so let's move on to the next page. And on the next page, we'll just see the table of contents. So you can see that we've got a, well, it's a 23 page pre-scene. And we're basically gonna be covering in this video, pages three, all the way up to the start of, all the way up to page five, I should say, where heating controls ends. So let's go down to the introduction and see what we've got. Now, if you've done, a case study before for SEMA, you'll recognize this page, but for everyone's benefit, what we have here is an introduction that provides context for who Frinter are. Now, this introductory page is quite important for setting the scene. While it doesn't look it, it does give you the necessary information to figure out kind of who Frinter are and also your position within the company. As remember, the case study exam what you're writing as, your your role playing as, I should say, as someone within the company, and you have to fulfill that role. And that's what this page gives you context on. So let's look at the first paragraph. We're told that Frinter is a quoted company that manufactures controls for heating systems and electronic devices that form the basis for smart homes. So we already know this, but the, the important bit that's been added on here that I did mention at the start is that it produces these products for smart homes, and that's an important bit we'll get on to now. 
Now, straight away from this first paragraph, we get some clues as to maybe some of the topics that could come up in the exam and some of the topics you might just be generally assessed on. So, it's a quoted company. Now, as a bit of context, in the last pre-scene, we had an unquoted company. So it just goes to show that this element could potentially come into play. So in this case, we've got a quoted company, meaning that it's publicly listed, meaning that there are different financing options available to it compared to that of an unquoted company. So this is going to be on our F2 topics. We're going to be looking at equity finance, debt finance, and the consequences of raising, say, equity finance for a public company, what ways it can do that through its public shareholders. Then because it's a manufacturer, we obviously have a number of cost management uh, techniques available to us or, or ones that have a higher likelihood of coming up compared to that of a service company, for instance. So we of course have activity-based management, we have absorption costing, total quality management, Kaizen just in time, just to name but a few. Not all of these are gonna be relevant, but these are just some of the topics that come up in P2. And when it comes to a manufacturer, these have a reasonably high likelihood of being relevant in some way. And then for smart homes, we have digital business models. Whenever you see the word smart in the context of a product, you are more than likely dealing with something that has a lot of complexity to it in terms of software. We're talking about something that probably collects a lot of data. And so these are opportunities for a business to develop its digital business model as it needs the experienced staff in order to maintain and develop its smart technologies, while also being able to collect and use any data it collects on its customers for the further development of its products or services. So that's what we can gather from this first paragraph. And you can see it's a decent amount to start off with. So if we look at the next one then, Frinter is based in Westland. And it is a developed country that has a strong economy whose citizens have a high standard of living. So the, the easy topic to think about here would be pricing strategies, wouldn't it? If you're selling heating controls and electronic devices, and these are what you might describe as potentially unnecessary additions, uh, what I say by that, Yes, you do need heating systems in a home, but it depends what Frinter is offering when it comes to heating systems. Are they offering generic ones or are they offering luxury uh, heating systems? If they're offering luxury heating systems or luxury controls, I should say, then it's not a necessity. It's something that people want. And so in that case, you could argue that potentially Frinter's business, its products are largely going to depend on the high standard of living of the demographics of its target market. So high standard of living could be an important aspect of this pre-scene when it comes to assessing how uh, effective Trinta is at trying to sell to its target market. Then in the second paragraph, we're told that Westland's currency is the W dollar. All I'll say about this is that while there's nothing really relevant there, we do have the standard IES21 foreign currency from F2. And just make note of that figure. Just make sorry, just make note of the currency denomination. Make sure you remember it just so that when it comes to the uh, mocks or the exams, you are consistent with Westland's currency denomination. Then we're also told that they are apply they are sorry, their financial statements are done in accordance with the International Financial Reporting Standards, or IFRS, which I'm sure we're all familiar with by now, but that is essentially F2, that's essentially the F2 area. So you can expect that more than likely in one of the variants and in one of the mocks, you are going to get questions on International Financial Reporting Standards. Then our last paragraph, which I say is pretty important, not maybe in your revision, but certainly in the mindset you take into the exam with you. You are a financial manager at Frinter's head office. This is the role playing part of the pre scene. Your responsibilities are associated with management accounting, and you report to Amadou Gallo, the senior financial manager, who reports directly to the finance director. So, what I've cooked up here is just a sort of very crude hierarchy of things. So, you've got the CEO at the top, obviously, 
Then you have the finance director and the senior financial manager below them, who is Amadou Gaulu, who we see in the, in the uh, paragraph. Then we have you below them, the financial manager. So your role is to implement senior management decisions and explain the accounting implications of those strategic decisions. So it's worth pointing out that you're not evaluating, you're not providing strategic advice here. Okay, as a financial manager, you won't be asked to give strategic advice, or rather, you will not be expected to give strategic advice unless you are specifically asked to in the question. That will come across as a way of the examiner asking you to give a recommendation or to provide some sort of justification for an explanation or advice you might give. But otherwise, this exam is more about explaining how something can be implemented or explaining the consequences of a decision, not evaluating it, okay? Then one last final point is that the exam is broadly split across five core activities, A, B, C, D, E. Now, if you want to look at more detail as to what these core activities are, you would be best to go either look at the management case study, study text we've produced, or you should go to the SEMA management case study exam blueprint, which you can find online. It's on page 19. So if you go to SEMA and you go to the management case study blueprint, you will find on page 19 a list of the core activities and assessment outcomes associated with those core activities. And that will give you a good idea of the subjects you could be assessed on in the exam. Now we've broken down this list and we've broadly speaking come up with the topics we believe are relevant to each core activity. So each core activity is equally weighted, you might notice, and Broadly speaking, P2 and E2 are the primary topics for this exam with some F2 sprinkled in there as well. All topics come up, okay? It's just that some core activities have more of a focus on some rather than others, and P2 is present throughout. So if you don't understand P2 that well, it would be advised to start revising and get into grips with a lot of the P2 content as it has a very high likelihood of coming up in at least one of your questions. Let's now start by looking at Frinter's history and its products, which is where the real meat of this video is going to be. In this first paragraph, we're given some history of Frinter. So we know that it was founded in the 1970s. It was initially responsible for manufacturing components such as thermostats and control, uh, sorry, thermostats to control domestic central heating systems. So essentially it used to specialize in the manufacturing of, you know, mechanical thermostats as opposed to the smart thermostats which we're expecting to see as we go through this precinct. We're told that Frinter's founder was a plumber, so you could say humble beginnings if you wanted to. And the whole point was they gave users greater control over their home. So you could say maybe the, the central value of Frinter's, yeah, the founding value almost you could say, is that Frinter's devices are to give users control of their home. Okay, outside of central heating now, outside of the specifics, it's these devices are there to give people control of their home. And then in the last bit of this paragraph, we're told that the company started to manufacture these devices at a time when there was a significant boom in the construction industry with new homes being built with central heating throughout and many old homes being modernized and upgraded to include central heating. So let's get some points together and figure out what this paragraph might tell us more specifically. So moving back to the top. So with Frinter being founded in the 1970s, so that's just under, just over 50 years, sorry, of uh, history there. And that means when it comes to the negotiation table, if Frinter is looking to sell or to buy from a supplier or customer, client I should say, then Frinter might be in a better position. It has this background, it has a long credit history, it's able to negotiate and perhaps leverage its position a little bit more strongly than a much younger company, one without as much history to back it up. So you might say that this is actually one way, not just a, a negotiation advantage, but it might also be a way of protecting from new entrants perhaps, depending on how difficult it is to work with different entities in the uh, the heat in the heating system market, you could say, depending on how difficult those conversations might be, 
the reputational history could be a boon to Frinta. Now, while I've got your attention at the end of this video, I'd like to make you aware of the other products that Astranti sell as part of the case study course. So the first of these is a series of study text and tuition videos, and these come in two flavors. You have our written study text if you prefer learning through reading, or you can watch our videos if you're more of a visual learner. Now to start with, we have an exam technique study series, which breaks down how to succeed at various case study levels. We'll be looking at exam technique, writing style, and planning that you need to nail to be successful in your case study exams. And to accompany this, we also have a revision series dedicated to the theory side of things. This is because at the case study level, there is a large amount of theory you need to be capable of using in your case study exam. So what we've done here is we've taken the key areas of the theory from the three case study levels and condensed them into a series of chapters to help focus your revision. Moving away from the more generic products and onto the products that are specific to the case study pre-scene, the first of these is the pre-scene analysis video series. First and foremost, this contains a series of videos where we break down the relevant pre-scene at the appropriate level of the qualification page by page. And throughout this video, we bring out all the key points that could be relevant for you in your exam, looking at various topics and things you might need to consider when revising for the case study. And then to supplement the pre-scene analysis, we also have two videos. We have the strategic analysis where we give a broad overview of what kind of strategy the pre-scene company is using and where it might be going in the future. And then we also look at the top 10 issues that we think this pre-scene company might be subject to and something that you may need to take into consideration when revising for the case study. We then provide an industry analysis document and a company in video. SEMA like to see you demonstrate wider industry knowledge in your exam. And this is what this industry analysis does, as it gives you the wider industry knowledge you need in order to fulfill this requirement. Essentially what it is, it's a large document that we've compiled on all the relevant industry information that we have gathered so that you don't have to do the revision yourself. And then to accompany this, we of course have a video that goes over this document to pick out some of the key points for you if you prefer that. We also produce a number of mock exams for every sitting. We write five mock exams for the first exam sitting, and then we add two more supplementary mocks for the second exam sitting. We design these mocks around the specific issues relevant to the pre-scene and make them as close to the real thing as you will see in the case study exam as possible. So these are a great way to practice your exam technique and test your knowledge of the pre-scene company under timed conditions. And then to add value to this product, we also offer a marking and feedback service. So we have a range of highly skilled finance professionals working as freelance staff for us, and it is these staff that provide the marking and feedback service. So this is a great service to use in conjunction with our mock exams, as it gives you a great idea of how you're progressing in the areas you need to work on for your case study exam. And then if you're in need of extra exam practice, we also provide a more generic question pack product. So obviously there are only so many questions you could write about on a specific pre-scene. So what this question pack is, is a series of generic questions on generic scenarios that we come up with at Astranti, whereby we look to test specific topics that come up regularly in the case study exam. So if there is a particular topic you are struggling with and we've only tested once in our mocks, and you'd like more practice on it, then these question packs will be a great product for you to turn to. The penultimate product on this list is a product for those of you who would like to get a full overriding picture in terms of your revision all at once, and these are our masterclasses. So these are our expert tutors who hold two masterclasses every exam sitting, and these essentially cover all key aspects that you're going to need to know for your relevant exams. So from particular theories to analyses of the pre-scene, all the way through to tips and tricks you can use in your exam. And finally, such is the confidence we have in the quality of our product that if you do purchase a full course from us and you unfortunately do not pass your exam using our product, then we will offer what we call a pass guarantee. So if you did not pass your exam after purchasing our full course, then you will receive the materials for the next exam sitting free of charge. Okay, thank you very much for listening to that. I hope you find our products useful. And of course, I would like to wish you the best of luck in your exam from everyone at Astranti.